one of four Mets to have his number retired by the organization, one of just two players, the other being the fellow Hall of Famer, Mike Piazza, who joins us now, and we're thrilled to have Mike with us here on our show. I wish it, Mike, was under better circumstances, but uh, so good to have you with us. What did Tom mean to you, and how important was it that you got to know him over the years? Well, I think I really want to echo what Todd said. I mean, I think he single-handedly built the franchise, a uh, franchise that, coming off the history of New York in the National League, needed a superstar at that time, someone to propel them and give them legitimacy and, um, and gravity. And he was the perfect player. He took the team, put it on his, on his back, um, and even throughout his career, which speaks for itself, his post-career, he was such an amazing figure. He was a Renaissance man. He obviously did broadcasting and everything he did, he did with a passion, with a grace and with a style. And he cared deeply uh, for the legacy of the game. And in uh, and, and Cooperstown, he was there every year before his health, his health started failing. And he was just a deeply passionate guy and loved the game. And that that obviously was magnetic and that transferred. And um, I think we as players ourselves, Todd, and, and, and from era, our era and present day players should really honor him because he really helped forge and build what the game is today. Mike, I think when, when Met th fans think of, of you and, and Tom Seaver together, they think of 2008 and you guys walking out the gate when Shea Stadium was closed and then the following year him pitching to you at City Field when that ballpark was open. What are memories like that for you and what do you take out of those moments? Well, those moments obviously were very special and they were special for the fans. Um, I mean, Shea Stadium, uh, as uh, the last few years, well, obviously it was a little antiquated as, in so far as present day stadiums, but the history there, um, the fact that it was our home, the fact that um, a lot of teams did not enjoy playing there and the legacy that Tom forged there really made it a definite uh, um, place for um, for the franchise to build its legacy. And so without question, um, he, he um, was embodied that. And for me, the special memories were just basically the 2013 All-Star game, sitting with him in the hotel uh, lobby and talking about him facing uh, the Hank Aarons and Willie Mazes and Willie McCoveys of his day. Those, those are the stories that I really treasure and, and will definitely miss. Hey, Mike, uh, good to see you, bud. Um, hope all is well for you, you and the family in, in, in Italy as well. So um, I know, knowing you as well as I do, that you're a guy that is a very um, profound student of the game. Um, you know your history. As a kid that grew up on the East Coast, um, what do you remember about Tom when you were a kid growing up and especially probably facing what was your Philly team um, as a kid where he had a lot of success? What do you remember about those times as a kid? Uh, that's a great question. I think the most important thing is that I remember and I think anybody can relate is when Tom Seaver was pitching that night in your town, you had to go to the game. I mean, my dad in the morning, he would say, we're going tonight, get your homework done. You know, let's get some practice in, and then we're going to the Phillies game tonight because Tom Seaver was pitching. He was one of those guys that was electric. He was one of those guys that you wanted to see pitch. He drew a lot of people in the opposing stadiums on the road and obviously at, at Shea where he pitched at home. And, and that's what I remember. There's very few players like that throughout history where – you know, your dad would say, we're going to the game tonight. I don't care if, I, if I'm in trouble, if, uh, you know, your mom yells at me, we're going. And, and that, to me, is the, the, the thing I remember most. And he was that iconic player, larger than life, that transcended the game. That's awesome. Um, and then as sort of a Renaissance man yourself and a lover of wine, I know you've got a lot of uh, interest in wine. Did you ever have a chance to sit down and talk to him about his passion for making wine and the types of wines and those types of things? What was that like for you? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned, I think the interesting thing for me is the process with Tom. I mean, Tom was a Renaissance guy and he did what he wanted to do. And he broadcast for a few years. And then I remember him saying to me, I did it, I enjoyed it, but it's time to do something else. And he put all of his passion and energy in his wine, uh, you know, GTS and, and 
really that was uh, in his later years a true love of his his uh, of his life. Um, you know, he became like he even told me he said I became a farmer, and he put all of his passion and energy into it. And obviously, his wine I've been seeing some really cute, really nice posts from fans who have collected and have drinking it in his honor. So. Yeah, I mean, he was just a unique guy. He was a character. He was a, a, a really a true gentleman, fiercely competitive. I mean, that's another thing. I mean, I was talking with Pedro Martinez about him earlier, and yeah, he was an example for all players and of all positions. And so um, he's a true iconic uh, figure of Americana, and it's it's really sad for us. I know, Todd, you know, our era, we were kind of a bridge era from the old school to the new school. But it truly is sad, you know, because we are losing these heroes. And, um, you know, again, it, it definitely is a sad day. Mike, we want to thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy. And, and we thank you for the recollections. Thank you, Mike. You too, guys. God bless.